Welcome to Live Town Hall. My name is Michael A. Charbon. 2018, this is our first live and interactive Live Town Hall for this calendar year, and we appreciate you joining us here today. Live Town Hall is an interactive show. It allows you the opportunity to post your questions online, and we will pose your questions to our guest in our studio. We've had great success with this uh, concept, and uh, we've been privileged to have many interesting people come and join us, particularly in the political realm. You can go to facebook.com forward slash Live Town Hall, or if you just Google Live Town Hall, you'll definitely come up with us there. Uh, so let's begin. Uh, she was born in Brampton, Ontario, and she went to McMaster uh, University. She graduated with an honors and a bachelor's degree in political science and peace studies, and she became a lawyer. Once a criminal lawyer, she was married, and she had a beautiful son who currently is four years old. And then all of a sudden, in 2015, it seems that my guest got a bug. She decided that she was going to run for the federal liberals and to run in an election. Now, she had a formidable opponent. Opponent, um, a Parmgill was a well-established conservative uh, person in the area, and Brampton North was a new riding. So here is this uh, very articulate uh, lawyer, uh, very smart, uh, very well-spoken, is going up against this formidable conservative machine. Well, uh, needless to say, as the story always goes, March 1st, 2015, uh, after all the dust settled, uh, Ruby Sahota stood uh, victorious as the uh, person who won the seat for Brampton North. And we decided we're going to have to have an MP in here. And uh, so we would like to, first of all, welcome Ruby Sahota as our very first MP that has come on to Live Town Hall. Congratulations, and thank you so much for being here, and a belated Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year to you as well, Michael, and to everyone tuning in today. Um, it's the first time I'm getting to connect with everyone at home, so Happy New Year to everyone there. So this is, uh, this is approximately halfway through your mandate mm -hmm. now. Um, we're looking at 2019 as election year. So a little 2018, we could say, is going to be a little bit of silly season, as one would say. Yeah. Um, if you were going to look, <laughs> look, look back and reflect on what you've accomplished, I mean, this is a city that you were born in. You were born and raised in Brampton. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know the people, you know the landscape. Um, if you look back at your one and a half years now, um, what are some of your accomplishments, uh, promises made and kept and others that you're working on? How would you reflect on your first year and a half? Because you, you were a French fry at the outset, right? It was your first time in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was a lot to learn in those first few years. Uh, I, you know, some inaccuracies with dates and things like that in places, but uh, I loved what you said about me, Michael. <laughs> but um, it's been about two, a little over two years since I've been elected. Uh, my son is five now. Uh, so he just had a recently had a birthday and um, uh, the election was in October of 2015. So in um, these last few years, I've, I've learned quite a bit. I mean, this is the type of job you, um, no one trains you on. You, you, know, you know, you kind of have to just, there are no training wheels. You get to the House of Commons and you sink or you swim. So uh, you have no option. We learn very quickly. Mm -hmm. I think within a month, I, I did feel a lot more comfortable uh, in my place there. Uh, I've, I, I'm sitting on, I've sat on about three committees at this point, uh, a special committee as well. I'm now the Ontario Caucus Chair. Right. So that is one of our largest regional caucuses. Uh, and um, being from the Liberal Party, uh, we have the most members in Ontario, so uh, I think that has been a very rewarding experience for me to uh, serve as uh, a chair for my colleagues. So uh, circle you back, mm -hmm. achievements, what are some things that you've done that you feel proud of that mm -hmm. have helped the community and that uh, has uh, basically been a as a result of you being elected? Yeah, well, as a result of me and my party being elected, we really do work as a team. Uh, you know, we are shedding more light on regional issues, and I see this in my caucus day after day. Uh, we're constantly, uh, you know, trying to push the departments, push, you know, bureaucrats or ministers, cabinet to to understand the nuances of our cities. And, uh, you know, and for many years we've heard that Brampton had not received its fair share. So we're really trying to highlight uh, what Brampton needs. We've brought money to Brampton for transit, 32.5 million. Uh, infrastructure is, you know, a, 
a big deal to our government and therefore we're putting in historic investment, they, you know, over $80 billion into infrastructure. I think that is one of our um, biggest achievements. The, the, the promise that we made in order to invest into our country, even if we would run deficits, that set us apart from all the other parties during the campaign. Um, and it's something that we have stuck to regardless of, you know, what some people may think because it's working, you know, the plan is really working, our economy is growing, uh, we have record-breaking low unemployment rates, yep. we've been investing In a lot years, into actually, our youth. The, uh, the statistics uh, that they released just recently, it was uh, the unemployment rate has been down uh, the most in eight years, and then the inflation rate is uh, between 2.1 and 1.6 percent. So, our debt to, debt to GDP ratio looks really good. Yeah. Uh, some of our landmark achievements are, you know, enhancing the Canada Child Benefit, making it tax-free, uh, indexing it now in this last budget uh, to make sure that it rises with inflation. We've enhanced CPP benefits. This is a big concern for seniors, and up until 2025, you know, the enhancements will continue to increase. So that it's up to 14%. What about old age, old age pension now has been put back to uh, 67 from 65, and now in the same time we're looking at a more stringent, boring stress test for people who are going to the well, banks. Well, well, that was the previous government's doing, and we've put it back down to 65. So it's not at 67 anymore; it's back at 65. That is one of our achievements as well. Um, the stress test is something that um, the, you know. The, the organizations that of banks that that structure what is the amount that you know should be uh, that they should be looking for, um, they've made this decision. Well, they're talking about they're talking about the level of borrowing. Yeah, what the stress test is how much money does someone owe, in and how all much the, do they do they already and to re get a mortgage? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, and I think it's an important step forward that we need to take considering how much debt uh, our country has, and we're seeing these reports day after day about uh, the rising level of debt, Canadians carrying more debt than most countries in the world. Our economy is doing better than most countries, all G7 countries, mm -hmm. in fact, but our debt levels are rising, and so there does we do need to do something to address that, so people do need to live try to live within their own, you know, within their means. I know it's difficult. We're hearing the concerns on the ground. And, and it's the reason we are, you know, we are trying to help relieve that burden mm -hmm. by programs like the Canada Child Benefit or working tax income, uh, working income tax uh, benefits. Increasing those, we're trying to make sure that those people on the lower end will benefit, uh, cutting uh, the middle class tax, uh, increasing it on the wealthy. These are all measures that we're trying to take to uh, make sure that people have enough to uh, to succeed and flourish. Uh, benefits that we're putting into youth and all of these things. But you know, it's a big concern that I hear from people all, all the time. And, I think it's going to be a question that's going to come up yeah. uh, as we go. So uh, we encourage you to participate. Live Town Hall is an interactive show. You can go to facebook.com forward slash Live Town Hall. So let's take a couple of questions here, Ruby. Uh, Amjeet said, um, how do you plan to engage youth in the political process? Well, um, the Prime Minister has set an exa excellent example of engaging youth. He has uh, the first ever youth council where he regularly meets with his council of advisors of young people who give him advice on issues of the day. And I think that's fantastic. And we've all followed suit as MPs and created our own youth councils in our own riding. So many, I would say a majority of the MPs all have active youth councils. And that is a way of engaging them, making them aware of, you know, how to have a voice when they feel some well, oftentimes voiceless. Also, you have that pride to vote. I think that's something that we miss in this country. It's pride to vote. You, um, it, it is not. Uh, it is not a, a right. It's a privilege. I mean, in Australia, if you don't vote, they they dock your taxes. Yeah, uh, we we've talked about. Uh, you know, some committees have talked about all of those various things in order to yeah. change our voting model. But when when kids get involved very young, when they're very young, yeah. they they get that uh, they get that excitement about politics. They get the excitement about elections, and they want to go out and vote. But it's if you're disengaged. You won't go out. When and you vote. talk about uh, when you talk about voting models, I mean that was one of the things that um, Justin Trudeau ran on was electoral reform. Yeah. that's kind of 
been left on the wayside now. Do we do we think that that's going to be resurrected or is that kind of past? Because that was one of the one of the pillars that he ran on, and we have yet to hear anything from that. Um, so not in this term, it's not going to be. I can't necessarily say what will happen in the next. You no, know, I'm when not. The next no, I'm not trying to throw place. you under the bus. I'm just asking. No, you, I, I know. Yeah. So I, I whether it will be resurrected mm -hmm. in in future governments, I don't know. Uh, I think we've definitely studied the issue more yeah. than any uh, previous parliament has. And yet, interaction from all parties and all people. From all yeah. parties, it was an unprecedented uh, type of committee where everybody was involved. We traveled. I was on that committee. Uh, we traveled from coast to coast to coast. We got a lot of input per, from people all around the country, but still, the engagement level on the issue was extremely low, and it was under one percent. Um, there are those that are very passionate about oh, the yeah. issue. Are very oh, I've had them on here about the oh, they're, issue. They, they live and die by uh, representation instead of uh, proportional first class representation. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and and absolutely. And there may come a time, and I think that the report that we produced is excellent and gives a lot of. Um, I just wish we'd have a defi the definitive. I mean, first past the post, everybody complains about that. I don't want to belabor the point, but I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, the stymied government in a proportional representation is something that we left. That's why we went to mm -hmm. uh, first past the post. But anyways, I'm not going to not going <laughs> to belabor that. James, uh, James has a question. How do we get the middle class uh, the world over to do much better with the underworld trade and globalization? How do we get the middle class the world over to do much better with and under the world trade and glo with world trade, that's a kind of a convoluted yeah. question. So world trade and globalization is affecting the middle class. Yeah. How do we elevate the middle class? Because the middle class is disappearing, yeah. right? Well, the haves and the have-nots now. Well, I, I think the argument is usually made that uh, like in, in countries like India and China and in Mexico, the middle class is growing, uh, has, has grown for several years. So people that we have been uh, doing a lot more trade Canadian companies, uh, maybe formally or informally with agreements yeah. um, in place, the, the middle class is growing in these countries. Uh, but there are large concerns that those that have a lot, that those are that those are the wealthiest, and mm -hmm. those that are at the very bottom end. We always talk about the one percent, right? That that um, disproportion is is growing. That those that are poor and those that are rich are getting even richer. But I wouldn't say that those in the middle are not growing as well. We can see that from very many. What about sal salary limits for some people who work for the government? I mean, we see in Ontario, for instance, uh, the gentleman who heads Ontario Hydro, which is most expensive hydro system in all of Canada is making about $4 million a year. The gentleman who heads Quebec Hydro, mm -hmm. which is probably one of the cheapest, is making $400,000 a year. When I had the opportunity uh, to speak uh, uh, to Premier Kathleen Nguyen at this desk and pose that exact question, I was told that, um, well, it costs money to hire the best. Mm -hmm. uh, is there ever a thought that what is, what is that ceiling that you can get paid enough mm -hmm. to be able to say enough is enough? Well, I mean, are, are, we, are, are we ever going to get to a position of that from a federal standpoint, do you think? Um, I think it's quite possible. I, it's not something that um, at the federal level we've had a lot of concern or discussions over. Um, the, the example you're giving, for instance, is also not at the federal level. But, right. um, but I mean, and just asking me, uh, you know, as, uh, as a person, I, I think that, yes, sometimes there are people that are very paid an immense amount to athletes um, a lot of other people that we see that are making disproportionate yeah, but athletes don't amounts work for the public that's, that's they, free. They, they we're don't. talking about public sector yeah. positions and, and public sector uh, uh, rates sometimes far exceed what the private sector is and there are many taxpayers who are saying I mean as we're facing debt now soon we have to get to a point where we're but not the common public sector worker if you were to take all public oh, sector a lot of workers, workers need the, a raise they haven't the, had a raise the average time government worker does not make as much as those do in the private but, sector. But people, so, so but we have benefits. Up. We have a yeah. lot of other things that encourage people to go into the public sector and, and want that job security that the yeah. government may be able to provide that the private sector does not. Um, but there's pros and cons to both. So there may be a few positions. Um, should those be reviewed? Is that the going rate for that job? I think there are some job? people that Perhaps. think there are more than a few, but I think that's something just to, that's a consideration that uh, we've heard. Uh, Calvin wants to know, um, how are you planning to bring back new jobs to Brampton? Well, um, we were having quite a bit of this discussion this morning at the Brampton Board of Trade where we have a, had a panel. Uh, it is definitely... Uh, 
something that we have to work at at all levels of government to make sure that the investments that we're making are co-aligning so that we're not working in silos trying to say, well, this is, you know, the, the new thing, green tech is what we're going to be doing and investing in at the federal level. But if there's not, uh, you know, if, if the municipal council and everybody at the provincial level is not also uh, making sure that those investments are going into the same place, we may not see that job creation. But so far, the investments that we've been making in infrastructure and in green technology um, you're going to see some um, more announcements as our government uh, keeps continuing. Well, even this is this the Monday. gift season, is it not? Yeah, 2018, well, it's the year before an election. It's the gift season because now now all the austerity hopefully is taken care of by the go governing uh, government, by any government. It's not just the Liberals, it's anyone. And then the year before the election is when they start to dole out some of the, the wonderful programs and things. I, I wouldn't say that's the case for our government. I mean, our budgets 2016 and 2017 have been outstanding in the amount of uh, investments they've been making in the people, in Canadians. Um, so not at all. And we're far from our next election at this point. We're still 21 months out. We still have another budget next year as well. So um, if anything, I think you're going to see that uh, the investments are going to be more targeted. Uh, but we have to wait to see what comes out. But that, that, that's just my feeling, that things are going to be more targeted to make sure that uh, we continue to grow in the areas that we've already made those initial investments in. Um, and, uh, you know, we are in Brampton, uh, you know, when you talk to the different levels, they, they know that uh, we're all on the same page when mm -hmm. it comes to housing, uh, concerns that we've been hearing for a long time, areas that have been underfunded and areas where the region has been really struggling to handle it on their own Particularly or the, the city region, yep. and and the transit transit issue in Brampton is is huge you know we're using more uh, transit than any other place in the country our transit uh, numbers are growing uh, for users well, all day two day go has been a huge success yeah. I, I think one of the things that you're gonna see uh, and ask for is in the uh, uh, 2018 elections, municipal elections, particularly in Brampton, one of the uh, hot topics is going to be the LRT. Yeah, uh, they I'm missed sure uh, they be. missed an opportunity. Some would say, and others said that they dodged a bullet. It's going to be interesting to see what the municipal elections uh, will return because there are some people who feel that that um, that subject should be revisited. Uh, I'm going to go to. Um, Sukminder wanted to make a comment and said, uh, uh, well done, dear. I would con uh, consider that's you. Well done to your comment. <laughs> um, uh, Jatinder said, how important is it uh, to the government to reunite families? Yeah, that, you know, that is also something that we have been known for as a party. Uh, the Liberal Party, oftentimes, uh, you know, I have so many people, whether they be Italians, Portuguese, Indians, you know, any wave of immigrants that have come to this country that a lot, uh, you know, says that they uh, were helped by the Liberal Party. The Liberal Party is a party of immigration and immigrants and understands why immigration is so important. Family reunification was at the core of our, our promises in our platform in 2015. We have doubled uh, the amount of uh, applications that are accepted every year for the family class so it's extremely important to us we are trying to streamline and speed up processes we've learned a lot in this last two years how we can improve things especially um, after um, the refugee program as well we learned quite a lot having to uh, deal with that in, yeah in there's a still short some facts to come out from that there's some people who were a little dismayed when we saw uh, some refugees Syrian refugees displaced in some of our military bases and we still have yet to hear the results of those, but we haven't heard any negative mm -hmm. uh, stories as of yet, so that uh, we'll take that as a positive. Um, Chantel says, I'm in your high school and I'm getting a, and getting a job is hard. I need experience to get a job and a job to get experience. Is the government doing anything to help this chicken and an egg problem? Yeah, well, I, I, I do really feel for her. I know I've been in, in, I've been in those shoes. I've had uh, trouble for years myself uh, as a young person. We, we go through this. The government is trying to one of our most successful programs, I would say, one that um, all the, the MPs have really been champion, championing in their areas is the summer jobs program. Mm -hmm. Uh, the summer jobs program has brought um, tens of thousands of jobs into hundreds of thousands at this point uh, into mm -hmm. Canada. And what it does is it allows people who, you know, go away to study, uh, which a lot of kids do, and they come back and they can gain experiences at, experience at home at their rec centers and camps, mm -hmm. uh, various different community organizations. And this helps uh, organizations uh, 
in Brampton. So many have been helped. I've right. been visiting them over the last summer, and it helps students gain experience. Uh, so I think it's 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 a really a win win because it brings jobs into the area the students live in. Uh, and not just where they and go away to experience. school, and it gives them a lot of experience. Yep. But there are various other programs as well that I can also uh, direct uh, this Facebook. Um, you, you, what did you mention the name was? It's a, well, we, wanted to, we wanted to reconnect with people and have them. Um, you log in at facebook.com forward slash live town hall, mm -hmm. and then that's our Facebook Live. You can also go to Ruby Sahota's um, uh, website as well, which is... Uh, yeah, you're better to give it than I am. You're, yeah, you're um, so uh, you can basically find me these days on social right. media. You can go to my Facebook page. You can tweet to me. You can yep. uh, MP Ruby Sahota is how you, you can find me on Google. You'll yep. find my website as the first page that pops up. Uh, my office is at 50 Sunny Meadow Boulevard. You can definitely walk in uh, five days a week there. Yep. And if you can't meet, if you can and only if you meet want to send a letter to Ruby, it's yeah. free. You absolutely can send a free letter yep. to me. You can email me yep. at ruby.sahoda at parl.gc.ca. You can, there's so many various ways of contacting me, but I, I really want to say for those that are really struggling and need some more one on one help that we may not be able to do through this uh, type of medium, please contact me and uh, we'll try to figure out what programs might best be suited to you and uh, where you might be able to find opportunities. Yeah. So Live Town Hall is an interactive show. It allows you to pose your questions online, unfettered, and we'll pose your questions uh, to the MP, Ms. Ruby Sahoda, representing Brampton North. Let's go to another question here. Manouf says, what is the most important priority you would like to achieve for Brampton and Canada in 2018? Is there, is there one priority? Is there one thing uh, that you want to do before your uh, mandate is completed? Um, you know, th what I was hearing uh, day to day, I mean, people have various different concerns, but most of the concerns were related to their children getting jobs and, and the economy and them having a good uh, living wage uh, that's keeping up with inflation. And uh, that really is you know, whether I'm, we're talking as colleagues in our caucus, whether I'm talking to people on the street, I really feel that um, it's an issue that regardless of where you come from, uh, what your, you know, where you work, it's your biggest concern to make sure that the economy is flourishing and doing well. Yep. Um, and so that day to day, uh, being able to afford a good standard of life, living good, um, good quality of life, that's really important. I think that's where, you know, some of the other Facebook questions that you've had too about how do we make sure that we have income, we have equity in our system. Um, those are very big questions that I think a lot of countries are tackling, uh, you know, these days and how do we make sure that we're um, spreading that wealth, uh, but allowing people to still be innovative and create, uh, you know, flourish in their own companies and jobs as well. So those, those are questions we're tackling and, and, you know, through reform that we have in the tax system coming, uh, these are things that we are addressing to make sure that uh, the wealthiest are paying a little bit more and uh, there's more to go around mm -hmm. for everybody else and so that we can all flourish and do well. Harveer says, uh, very nice, Ruby. Good job. Uh, Fitzroy says, you are doing an awesome job for our city. Blessings. So the Globe and Mail Nanos Research just uh, released a uh, poll mm -hmm. uh, on the 16th, a couple of days ago. And they took a poll and said, so if we were going to have an election today, where would we be? Well, we found out that the Liberals would win by 37%. The Conservatives would have a 34% uh, margin. The NDP, 20%. The Green Party, 5%. Then they decided to ask them, well, so who would you like as a Prime Minister? Who's your favorite person? Number one was Justin Trudeau with the Liberals. Andrew Scheer, the Conservatives, number two. Jagmeet Singh, who, by the way, just got uh, engaged, is a friend of both Brampton Focus and uh, Live Town Hall, so we congratulate to Jagmeet. Jagmeet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he would be number three on the list, and Elizabeth May from the Green Party. Now, if you look at where the uh, provincial Liberals are at, Kathleen wins in the 12 to 18 percent popularity range. That's mm -hmm. a little scary for a Liberal from a, um, a federal standpoint. When you hear what Nanos is saying and you see the condition that the provincial liberals are in, does that give you any cause for concern no. with the election coming in, in 2019? 
No, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about how we can deliver uh, on our platform promises, uh, how we, you know, we've come very far in these last two and a half years. That's what keeps me up on, at night is how are we going to make sure that we deliver everything else that was in that platform? Those are my concerns. I, our prime minister, I have no concerns over. Um, Kathleen Wynne, you know, I wish her a lot of good luck and success. And we have been uh you know, at the provincial level, at the federal level, we have been doing some really great work. A lot of our priorities have been aligning, so there is a very uh, good uh, shared vision there. So it's been fantastic. I, I hope she gets to continue, but I mean, it is the people's choice at the end of the day. So that doesn't keep me up at late night. And um, our prime minister is, is is doing fantastic. He's out there. He's meeting with people all the time. He's accessible. Um, he's you know, not a lot of prime ministers are putting themselves out well, there. Well, I just saw him in London. On, I just saw him in doing, London, Ontario, um, last week at a, at a curling event. The yeah, uh, continental right. I think curling. his flight was delayed or something. Yeah, and so, so then he showed he, up at a curling yeah, event. Yeah, he showed up in a curling event and just mm. uh, uh, went with the the athletes. It's important. You know, we've to seen stay him in, in Brampton. Touch. Yeah. We, we've seen him in Brampton Quite numerous times. Mm -hmm. And every time we see him in Brampton, we see him surrounded by your yourself and your colleagues and mm -hmm. uh, Navdeep Baines is there there's you're all well insulated around him to show that you're you know he's in your area what what does he think of the region of Peel specifically in Brampton does what does he identify with the economy and the people here what is the touch point for him that, that, that's a really good question. Um, I know that he's been in the region of Peel uh, quite a lot, uh, so that makes me very happy what exactly he thinks about the region of Peel. We've told him our concerns mm -hmm. several times about um, the growth. I know that he knows it's a very vibrant community. I've heard mm -hmm. that from him many times. It's a very diverse community. It is a good representation of what Canada is and uh, what it could, should continue to be. Uh, to accept diversity and uh, to live uh, cohesively, co you know, with each other and to have, uh, a, you know, I would say um, a, a huge potential for a lot of growth economically here in the region too because of our diverse young uh, population that we have. Well, Brampton's about Those to pop. Those are things he is uh, aware of. Yes, it is. Uh, and I think it's going to be good for Brampton. I think that we are at the cusp of, you know, something really big and, and tr making sure that this city is moving in a direction that is progressive. Uh, I would say the people of Brampton thinking. are always so very proud of having the Prime Minister here. Yeah. I mean, we see him interacting with... Uh, and Madam Mayor Linda Jeffrey, and, and we see him with you guys. I'm just wondering what his thoughts are. So it would be interesting to one day to, to, to learn that more, more specific to this region, because it is a unique region. It is probably one of the most diverse regions even in all of Canada. Even as an MP, he had come here several times, uh, even become, before coming leader. Yeah. Uh, he had been in this region many times and has good friends from this region. So I know that he's very much aware of what this region is all about. Uh, and it's good to have a prime minister that is, you know, he's, always there. I don't know if people at home realize this, but um, you know, we have weekly caucus meetings when we're up in, in, in Ottawa. The Prime Minister is the center of those caucus meetings. It is the time where we get to share everything about our region. As Ontario caucus chair, I get to share the concerns and priorities right. of Ontario. But of course, as a Which Bramptonian first- a huge first, kudo to you too. We've, said, we've mentioned this twice, and I just want to acknowledge that that's a huge kudo for you mm -hmm. and a show of respect and acknowledgement for your expertise and the way you handle yourself. Also being a lawyer, obviously, is, is yeah. good. But that, that is very, that it's wonderful for the people of Brampton North to know that, that their MP has a role like that, particularly in the caucus. Well, I think I, it's, I, it's, it's about good. building good relationships, and yep. it's what I'm trying to do at the uh, provincial and municipal level as well. And I'm, I'm uh, doing my best to build good relationships with my colleagues uh, up there too. So they, they voted me in. And uh, so it's no great, greater honor uh, than having your own colleagues uh, elect you to be their chair. And so all I would to wrap that up to, though to say is that the prime minister is very grassroots driven. Um, he very much loves being in different regions, seeing you know the development in those regions, mm -hmm. and he will be here time and time again as well. We, we look forward to uh, entertaining him here in uh, Live Town Hall. We've tried. Uh, I know his schedule is always, but that's a shameless plug. Of course. <laughs> so let's now go to Don. Don says, uh, how important is it for the federal government to support community infrastructure, i.e. centers, parks, and repair them? Yeah, I, I think it's very important. It's, uh, it, it is, uh, I think, a gathering place for our community, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing more and more of that 
um, in different areas of our city. People are using the parks as gathering spaces and as networking spaces and not just places to walk through or have only a stroll for a few minutes. Uh, it's a place for all age groups to gather. So I think it's extremely important. Uh, we have been putting money into parks uh, in Canada this Canada 150, actually, the federal government made a huge investment. Well, I'm, particularly I'm so in glad you knew that. So yeah, for yeah. In the Canada 150 know, funding, absolutely. we funded a lot of huge. parks and um, it was so that they've been able to uh, repair and um, keep themselves up to date. Mm -hmm. And so we, we are listening to a lot of those, you know, that burden does go uh, to the municipal level, but we're trying to make sure that we do our part into the local areas as well. So we, we have been putting those infrastructure, uh, that infrastructure money in, the Canada 150 funding, but also uh, to make sure that we have more bicycle lanes, you know, and that we is need a to part. protect parkland too. That is a part of Parks and Rec as yeah. well, right? Yeah. So we need to make sure that people are able to enjoy the outdoors, not just by getting from one place from in a car, but also uh, by all means, by walking, having the the, the parks, the yep. trails. The, well, part of um, the vision for Brampton is you want to be able to walk to where you work. Yeah. And within that, that means you could also yeah. bicycle. There's a huge bicycle. Yeah. And, I, and I think, you know, people who don't live in Brampton and don't explore Brampton enough oftentimes, and even, and I could even say this for myself, you know, there's a part of your life where you get, you, you move away, you go to school, you, you take uh, your city for granted and you yep. don't explore enough. I think all of us do that. Um, we're, but when you That's do start true. exploring Brampton, you'll realize there is a lot more there that it has to offer than you realize, and it's right under your nose. We have fantastic parks here. So we're about halfway uh, done in our uh, live town halls, just after 7.30. My name is Michael A. Charbon. We're here with the Ruby Sahota MP for Brampton North. Uh, live town hall is an interactive show. We invite you to pose your questions. Go to facebook.com forward slash live town hall, and you can post your questions, and we'll ask Ruby your questions. So let's uh, get a couple of quick ones in here. Um, how do you see the three levels of government working together to regulate and monitor marijuana sales to make sure that it does not fall into the hands of the underage? There's still a bit of controversy. Um, yeah. That was one of the pillars that Justin Trudeau ran on. Mm -hmm. uh, those horses have left the barn. I think Canada is uh, uh, forward enough in our thinking and our realization that uh, uh, marijuana is not just made for people to get high. There are a huge amount of people that use this for medicinal purposes. We do see some jostling now to the percentages because there is the financial uh, vertical that happens with that. Mm. Um, there has been some talk that um, uh, agencies like the LCBO are going to be tasked with being able to supervise that because they do that with alcohol. Yeah. Um, does that all make sense to you? And, uh, and as far as the percentage coming back to... Uh, because some people in the provincial government say that they're the ones who are going to have to clean the mess up if there is a mess afterwards. Yeah. How do you react to all those statements? No, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, we've had fulsome debate on this issue, discussion, I guess I should say, in our caucus mm -hmm. as well. Uh, we all were out there supporting uh, not the federal government to receive the majority of the funding that comes out of these sales, but for the provinces and the municipalities yeah. to be given the majority. So here we are as federal representatives, but we're not asking for that money to be coming back to us necessarily but I mean it would be great right because we could be saying hey now we're completing this promise yeah, and that but your promise municipalities and we got all this are going to appreciate it much more provincially absolutely yeah. and yes. and they need and it and so yes, we understand that we definitely yeah. understand that we 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 talked about that uh, quite thoroughly. Our fine minister, finance minister got out there, negotiated, mm -hmm. um, and made sure that uh, the provinces and uh, the municipalities left happier. Uh, and I think you did see that from what all was the, the percentage? News footage. Was it? I forget. I, I don't it's have twenty-five. Uh, twenty-five percent is, I believe, is what we're. Or is I it think 20? it's twenty. Was it twenty and twelve? Yeah. Something. I think it was twenty and twelve, or something like that. No, um, so we started with a 50-50 <laughs> yeah. um, understanding, but I think we ended at, uh, t uh, I think, uh, oh, somebody's going to have to correct me. Yeah, I that's may okay. Have to go no. I, know. I, mean, but the, I think the, the it, it may line. have been 25-75 for the province, yeah. so uh, I think that's where we, we still off. Are we still looking at July to having a remedy to this? and having? Uh, it, uh, we are looking at so? this summer, absolutely. Summer, absolutely. And, uh, but there's no, there's been some misconception that Canada Day is going to be the day. It's yeah, certainly well, not. Uh, I, I no. think a lot of people keep saying that, but... That I think people not. are going to light up well before that. <laughs> uh, I think well, what, the only other question I have with, uh, with the marijuana topic is that we will come to uh, uh, a road when you won't be able to uh, arrest people where the, the criminal entity uh, 
uh, is going to have to take a huge divide with our with our courts and that. So I think that's where we're going to have a little bit of a problem, and it'll be interesting to see how we deal with that eventually. Because possession laws and mm -hmm. public laws, etc., and rights and freedoms of yeah. both the marijuana smoker for medicinal purposes and the person who does not want to smoke. You know, I think we still have a couple of hurdles. I, to I go think there will, will be wrinkles uh, anytime. Uh, you know, anytime you're taking a big leap in policy like yeah. this, uh, a big change, uh, there's going to be wrinkles to sort Does out. Does it scare you at all with the United States being relatively contrary to that? Many of the states in the United States, I mean, you look at, sure, there's Arizona and, and some of the other uh, states. Uh, does that bother you? Does it concern you at all? No, it does. It no. doesn't. I think uh, we are a very progressive country. We're a very no. forward-thinking country, and we're trying to create. We're trying. We're solution-driven, right? So we have a problem right now. We, we have, have one tenth of their population. We, we too, have a marijuana house. problem in this country right now. Yeah. Young people are using marijuana. We have a fentanyl problem. We don't have yeah. a marijuana problem. We have a fentanyl. Problem. We have a fentanyl problem. But what I'm saying, when it comes to the question about young people and access yes. to marijuana, we do have a problem there. Yeah. Our, you know, if you go into any high school and ask any young person whether they have have access to marijuana, their answer will be yes, depending on whether you're an authority or not. But How much do you want? <laughs> <laughs> but their yeah. answer will be yes. And yeah. it's shocking me even the more and more I engage with young people. Well, the age how is lower, easy lower, lower. Is. And so we do have a problem with access currently. What we're trying to do is solve, uh, come up with a solution the, to that, the, and also regulate and make the actual substance. That's an interesting safer. debate. There are many, there are many avenues to that. Um, we can maybe save that for another time, sure. but I think there's uh, there's many avenues to that. Uh, Mohammed says, uh, "What keeps you motivated every day as an MP?" People. Uh, people really keep me motivated, uh, whether whether it's people who are upset about an issue or whether it is people who come in saying, thank you so much for helping me on that file, that case, or that concern that I had. Thank you so much for li listening. That keeps me going every day. If I have something to work on, uh, whether it's, you know, somebody upset that I'm trying to help, that, that makes me want to run back to the office and see that person and see if there's been progress. And, you know, whether uh, whatever emails I've sent or whatever people I've tried to connect them to, something has worked out from them for them so people keep me going I, I, I am really driven by contact and connection to people it's something that I thrive on it's like my gasoline mm -hmm. uh, it fuels me and charges me uh, so and especially young people I would say in particular mm -hmm. uh, really uh, drive me to do a good job so that more young people will get involved because a lot of times you know they do see themselves in me as, as a younger MP as a younger representative as a female a lot of women see my you know themselves in me so that keeps me driven you know to do a good job to succeed to leave it behind takes a, a lot legacy. to do that it does take a lot because you know there will always be some people that are upset depending on the decision that you've made but you want to leave this job and people you know, this job does come to an end at one point. It's all the will of the people. The people put you here yep. and you have to realize that. Well, they can put you in, they can take you out. And they can take you out. That's so right. you need to make sure that you look back. That's what I think always. And you can look back at your time that you served with some pride, knowing that you Well, the motivation of serving too is so good, right? Yeah. I mean, you're a lawyer, you're a mother. So, I mean, it, that, that's it's innate. Fantastic. It's fantastic. It, the motivation of make you know seeing that maybe you're making an impact that your child is going to benefit from yep. that other children are going to benefit from and uh, that the majority of Canadians will see some results and that that motivates you so today um, interesting we have a question here so just to give some a context uh, the employment minister Patty Hajudu how do you pronounce your last name I do how do mm -hmm. uh, they just um, uh, there was an application form that uh, asks people to mark a box on an, on an electronic form that says that they're acknowledging the Charter of Rights, including mm -hmm. women's rights, women's reproductive rights, and uh, there are some religious organizations and churches and youth camps who, who believe that they're not going to get any funding if they don't check that box. And for them, uh, their belief is a child in the womb is a valuable thing and that abortion is not part of their uh, vernacular. Um, so we come to now where uh, the government um, has said in a form that is given to everybody, you have to acknowledge that you address these charters of rights. And the question here was from Jordan, who said, will you stand up for people of faith who don't want to violate their freedom of conscience on issues like abortion and LGBTQ rights to get money for federal grants to help hire summer students? Now, I just want to caveat this. This is not your portfolio, mm -hmm. and I get that. And I'm not trying to throw you under the bus, and we can't throw Ruby under the bus because this is not her gig. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. And you're not responsible for answering for the Prime Minister, 
but you are here answering for your constituents. So from a, from a 50,000 foot level, we can ask the question, but in all reality, folks out there, I mean, Ruby is not the minister, um, uh, is not the minister of employment, and neither is uh, the person who uh, generated this. So I want to make that clear because sometimes broadcasters like to throw you under the bus and watch you sizzle. But, um, so, so th this is I a controversial question. How, how would you, how, how would you, how would you approach uh, the is, question? And it's an issue that uh, you know I, I I see rising lately. I've uh, been reading a little bit on it uh, on social media here and there. Um, we there were some concerns last year with the summer uh, jobs program where uh, people who are actively, um, you know actively fighting against uh, people's rights uh, were, were, were receiving this money and that was a co that was controversial at that point as well. So you know it's kind of a situation where <laughs> you're in controversy either way. Um, but freedom of religion is also a charter right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I do stand by that charter right. I stand by all charter rights. This is going to be an election issue just because of this box. You can see people on both sides are going to in uh, conflate the situation. Yeah. Um, it's so you have the freedom to believe whatever you want to believe. Yes. You have the freedom to practice whatever you want to practice within your church. I visited many churches in their summer camp programs this summer. Mm -hmm. I think they're doing fantastic work. And I, uh, I think, uh, you know, and this is just my personal belief, not the government's at this point. I think being a part of uh, a, a faith can be a very good, positive impact on one's life growing up. So I think it's, it's very important. Um, not to say that if you're atheist or whatever, I, you know, you don't have... Any faith of any God. A, anything. Uh, you know, I think everyone creates some kind of a belief system where, for themselves. Where the, where the discussion happens is when the government starts to get into the point of making you check a box, where someone says, I believe that... But, but uh, what is uh, the uh, box uh, that they're checking off? Like, women's rights. The, well, it, the, it, all, it's, it states, uh, I don't have it in front of me, so I can't... Uh, and, and I don't want to go too deep into this because we can get it ourselves into a rabbit hole. Yeah. And as I said at the outset, that's not your portfolio, nor is it our job here today to challenge you to that. I just wanted to address it's, a question. It's, it's, it's a fine act, uh, balancing act, yes. because, you know, the, the Charter protects... In individuals from government intervention um, when it comes to them practicing their religion. So this could become a charter issue at the end of the day you have, again. You, you have right? two pregnant women. Yeah. One woman says, I control my body and I can do what I want with yeah. my body because if I have this child, I have to raise it. The other woman says, this body, this baby that is inside of me is a soul and a human being from the moment of conception. From when the sperm uh, 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 goes into the egg, it is a human. Both those women are right in their own beliefs. Of course. When we get the government in the center, so you got to check a box. That's when some people. But start nobody's to go making that woman check a box. Like so, that's not the no, scenario then, but, but, we have the, happening what the, here. Um, what Everyone... the question is is that respect to the to the ruling of the application that you must agree by making a box in this electronic form that they respect the charter of rights, including women's right, women's reproductive rights, etc. They're they're. Yeah. See, and 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 and, and 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 that's that's where my belief is that I as a or, woman well, I, control I, of your own body. I do not have the right, no matter what my beliefs are. Maybe my beliefs are that abortion. You know, I I would not engage in abortion. Maybe that's my belief, but it's not my right to impose my belief on somebody mm -hmm. else who may not wish right. to have that child. So uh, th that's kind where of what the I person stand. is saying with checking the so, box. I guess. So with checking the box, you're kind of saying you're not going to intervene in anybody else's choice and anybody else's freedom. Uh, I'm gonna but leave you it, I'm can leave practice whatever you wish. I agree. I'm going to leave it at that. Th yeah. That's a it's a contention. We will never come to an agreement. Yeah. It'll always be. Both are very important charter rights, both the you know the women's rights and reproductive rights the and the right to religion. The only caveat that I, I put in there, and not taking one side or the other, is that the government makes you check a box to that. That's the only thing, I mean, yeah. that's the only thing that, anyways. So, so Vivek wants to know, uh, what would be the major priorities of the president government uh, continue for another term? What, what are some of the... Uh, major priorities that the present government would like to continue in the next term. Um, well, uh, a lot That's of a our question. a lot of our priorities are going to carry over if elected. Right. Uh, uh, again, uh, you're going to see a lot of similar investments continuing. Um, you're going to see probably a lot more on you know um, a lot of issues that are coming forward like. Uh, Pharmacare, a lot of other things, but it's a platform that we still have to develop. You know, and this happens at the party level. There's a lot of 
policy. We have a convention coming up in March, and uh, in that convention is where uh, the policy is going to be driven from the grassroots. So that's how parties come up with their visions, their 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 policies. Is we go back to our, our basis, our roots of people, and what they want to see happening. People are submitting different policies they want to see in the upcoming uh, platform. So I think. Time will tell after this March convention, this po big policy convention, you're going to see. So as you're following that policy convention, I think that's going to unveil uh, what, if we were to be brought in for another term, what you'll start seeing in that new term. Do you think, Ruby, that we as Canadians live beyond our means? Um, well, uh, the, you know, the stats and the news uh, are definitely saying that. I'm going to give you some stats that, in a sec. I'm just, that, I'm just asking, do, you, do you think we're living beyond our means? Individually, okay. is what you're asking. I, it, so here, 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 was, here, here was the crux of, mm -hmm. of, of one of the problems. Uh, the Fraser Institute just uh, released um, our debt mm -hmm. and our combined federal and provincial debt. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2007 and 2008, it was $833 billion yeah. in debt. Mm -hmm. Now that's already a big dollar figure. Um, they're saying that in 2016 and 17, it's going to be 1.4 trillion. That means every Canadian, mm -hmm. man, woman, and child, owns $37,000. You owe each of you out there $37,000. We we saw the Liberal government come in and invest, as one would say, and debt finance, another would say. Mm -hmm. Um, we look at the um, the debt of Ontario as the second largest sovereign debt of any non-nation in the world. Yeah. We're borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. What is the exit strategy? What is, final sentence, what, what is the point where we say, when do we pay this all back? We're paying almost $1,900 a month in interest charges per person. When do we start to talk about solving that debt? Mm -hmm. Well, the solution to the problem is to make sure that you know we're bringing in uh, more than uh, we're, we're we're financing. I guess you would say so. Any any business that wants to grow, um, they're going to leverage the, you know their equipment. They're going to take out another mortgage. They're going to take out another loan. They're going to create more jobs uh, as a result of expanding their business. It's a risk that they do take, but no business would ever grow beyond being, uh, you know, a mom and pop shop if they didn't have a vision and Correct. they didn't have that will and that, you know, the, I, I would say the, the guts to take those leaps and bounds and that, to we, see we, that vision. I think we get that. that yeah. and, and that's not, uh, that's not in discussion. So, it's, it's when do you say, we can't borrow any more money. Let's start paying down some of our debt. When do we get to that? I've never heard a politician to this day come to this desk and say that we have an exit plan. When do we start to pay that off? Well, we need, our focus needs to be to make sure that we keep growing our economy. And, and that's at the core of our commitment. And when you ask me what my number one priority is uh, as a you know elected representative, I would say that is what it is. And so in order, to, that is always going to remain the priority. So if paying off our debt means we're gonna to have to scale back on jobs growth and scale back our economy, that's not a good decision for us to make. We need to make sure that we keep moving forward. Um, our jet, debt to G GDP ratio is decreasing. And I think that is the number that people should be looking at and focusing on. Uh, so we are doing better and better. And I think we're gonna hear um, some good numbers in this new budget as to where we're at. Uh, so I'd love to come back after this next budget is. But announced. I'd love that to be. I'd love that to be. Take that back to your caucus, Absolutely. Ruby Soda. That Absolutely. we we we, we want to know about an exit strategy yeah. because there's a lot of people out there when they and when they get on that coffee table at the end of the month and you have three hundred dollars worth of bills mm -hmm. and you have two hundred dollars worth of uh, income to use round figures. That other hundred dollars gets put over to the next month, but it still has to be addressed. And it seems like politicians and uh, you know and governments seem to love to borrow, 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 but we never hear how are we going to pay that back. And that's always the hardest decision. Um, Suk Pal says, federally, what is our government doing in order to create, promote uh, an eco-friendly city? Any proposals or projects in the works for an eco-friendly? City. Well, Brampton's doing that right now. They have a, a new master plan. Yeah, and uh, a part of our funding formula mm -hmm. is to make sure that that is a part of a lot of the projects and proposals that we get. Uh, so it's not um, the federal government's job to create uh, 
specific projects in the city or name sites for different projects, but it's our job to create uh, funding models and policies because uh, we are the biggest funders in the country mm -hmm. uh, down to the local levels uh, to make sure that those are priorities that projects are keeping in mind. So almost every one of our uh, ministers, you know, when you saw their mandate letters uh, at the beginning of when we took office, every single one uh, meant, uh, you know, mentioned the priorities of the environment and to make sure that um, those were key into anything that they were doing as a minister. So it doesn't matter if you're the minister of um, um, finance, well, finance, of course it matters, but it doesn't matter if you're the immigration minister or any status of women minister. The mm -hmm. environment is related to every one of those portfolios now. So when they're funding something, that's a box that you need to check off yeah. and you need to make sure that that project has uh, environmentally, environmentally friendly, yeah, friendly yeah, aspect. Yeah. And so that is, you know, there's a lot of... Um, That's a definite box you want to check off. Yes. Very nicely so, said. So <laughs> there are a lot of, um, you know, a lot of funding that we're doing and there was an announcement just made out of $700 million, uh, just uh, the other day, uh, you know, that, that we're funding clean technology. Yeah. And that was an announcement made uh, with Minister Baines uh, and Cal Catherine McKenna, and so we are directly funding companies yep. that are uh, trying to scale up with clean and, technology, and, trying to play fair. and we're trying yep. to also look at uh, the auto industry and how they're trying to uh, change, you know, the type of models that they're making so that they're cleaner. So every industry that is coming to us for some kind of funding, that box better be checked off because that is one of our biggest priorities to make sure that we're moving in a direction uh, that we need to be moving in uh, because that's where jobs of the future are going to be as well. It's for so thinking ahead. We yeah. have to be thinking ahead and we have to be leaders to make sure that uh, countries are also following suit. But a lot of countries are also uh, leading in this area. And I think for the last 10 years, we had actually been dragging our feet in this area. Are we at where we need to be? No, this is actually one area of things that we still have left to do. We are funding certain projects. Are we meeting our environmental um, goals that uh, this government has set out for ourselves? Uh, slowly, but uh, not uh, at the level that we need to be I think we, we, need, to we need to talk about uh, replenishing our, our electricity through solar. And the Tesla concept uh, is uh, huge. Uh, but we don't want to have certain, certain farmers are saying that, um, that they're being taxed for bringing their electricity from their solar panels and putting it back to the grid. So mm. we have to take that into consideration. Um, yeah. We've got about 10 minutes left. You're watching Live Town Hall. Ruby Sahoda, MP from Brampton North, is joining us here today. If you wish to get your final questions in, do so at facebook.com forward slash live town hall. Any of the questions that aren't answered on the show, Ruby will uh, attend to them. You can also go to Ruby's uh, Facebook. Uh, also, you can go to ruby.sahota, that's S-A-H-O-T-A, -A, at P-A-R-L dot G-C, which is Government of Canada, dot C-A. So you can always get a hold of Ruby that way. Um, uh, Finance uh, Minister Bill Monroe, he announced some tax reform proposals in the summer. They were, um, they were to um, attack the wealthy, as they, as they thought. And, but unfortunately, there was a little bit of backlash. Um, they, were, they were triggered an avalanche of criticism from doctors and lawyers and farmers and bookkeepers, etc. And then a bill retracted it a bit. Uh, are we going to see a new launch of this tax reform with some of those consideration and complaints, as one would say, that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Canada came uh, because it was not well received and it was, um, it, it was a tough scrap as it, as it was as a go. Do you think we're going to see before the next budget a, a, a relaunch of these tax, tax reforms? You're going to you're going to see what's going to come out of that consultation right. in the new budget. Absolutely. Uh, so there's going to be a lot more clarification of where we're headed. Uh, you're going to see a lot more of a targeted formula mm -hmm. uh, for those tax changes. Uh, you, we have taken into consideration and I've taken numerous meetings uh, with many people in the business community. I'm married to a doctor. Uh, so there were consultations happening at my household all the time. Um, but uh, this is the pain of consultations yeah. as well but it's a healthy pain i think uh you know i know there was a lot of criticism but had we put it all in a bill and just presented it in the house of commons like governments often do um 
people wouldn't have caught on for a very long time, but yeah. that's not how we function. It would have been passed and you would have talked to your accountant and he says, oh no, you can't deduct that anymore. That's what? Not how, yeah, and, but that's not how we function. We are a government, um, whether you know people think it's the right strategy or not, uh, I think it's a great strategy. We're constantly consulting with people on the ground. Does that create noise? Yes, because it gives people an opportunity to actually mm -hmm. voice their opinion loudly and clearly. And uh, there was a lot of misconceptions as well because there weren't a lot of details put out in that reg uh, that first paper, yeah. uh, the, the discussion paper that was put out over the summer. The communications plan was but not as effective as, uh, as it could have been, as one would say. Per perhaps, <laughs> perhaps. I think there was a, you know, a lot of learning out of that consultation, but yeah. uh, would I ever say that we should stop consulting? No, because I think we got a lot of a lot of good feedback from professionals. We got a lot of good feedback from you know people in the tax community, from MPs as well, that we have a lot of uh, people with a lot of experience in those areas in our caucus. And, uh, and we also got to see a lot of where the government or where the finance minister was coming on this too. Mm -hmm. And you know, going to one of your Facebook uh, uh, questions previously, the income inequality is a big growing mm -hmm. issue in our society. Like it or not, nobody wants to pay well, more in taxes, yeah. uh, but it's something that we have to address. Uh, we the have to make sure though- Educated and non-educated too is a huge yeah, divergence. But, what we have learned out of that is we have to make sure that we are targeting the, the right group and not unnecessarily casting a wider net that needs to be cast. So I want to so I want to quote uh, Ruby Sahoda. She said, Canadians are proud of this legacy and with the public consultation, our aim is to continue to foster and strengthen this legacy. So are you going to take more time now from a national standpoint to go across the country and do consultations on certain subjects that are touch points, which may become election touch points? Are, are we looking forward to seeing Ruby Sahota going out there more? Because I mean, that's a, that's a wonderful statement yeah. to be able to foster that legacy and support that legacy of public consultation. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, we uh, are learning a lot. Uh, we are representatives, representatives of the people, and it is their voice that we need to take back to Ottawa. So I think especially, uh, I think this tax reform issue was a fine example of it. Uh, it created a lot of noise, but at the end of the day, a lot of people received a result of what may be to come. I guess it's still a little bit of speculation, yeah. but a lot of it's put, been put out there that there's uh, quite a lot of reforms that are going to come out of this. So it is it worked, right? The public consultation worked. People uh, bringing their opinions, constructive opinions worked the best. So those that made submissions and explained um, yeah. constructively what the government could do instead, uh, that is very appreciated and, and helps us develop good policy. What doesn't help is um, oftentimes just complaining for the sake of complaining or complaining uh, because you don't want to pay more but not having uh, you know good solid reasons as to why this may affect your growth or potential yeah. and how it expect it affects the community as a whole you know that is what we're looking for I'm going to continue doing consultations in my riding I'm going to continue doing them yeah, as take some, of the, as a whole. take some of these things to a national basis because it's important I may not be able to go across the country always I am a caucus chair so I'm going to try to travel more of Ontario to make sure mm -hmm. I can understand the different needs of all the regions. That's a good quote, and, and, and people read that and believe that. As they should, because we are all in different ridings across the country, and the benefit of being a part of this government right now is that we have representation at, at all, in all parts of the country, yeah. right? Uh, in Atlantic Canada, in uh, Western Canada, Well, you're the majority. In you're, Alberta. you're the kids in the block. Well, group. sometimes you can be the majority but have no representation in certain parts of the country. True. Luckily, we don't have that scenario right now. We have representation everywhere. So we, through our MPs, we get a lot of good feedback back, and those are the consultations that are happening, right? MPs are holding across the country so one, town halls. One meetings. more question because I want to give you a chance at the end, but I just want to fit this last one in. The rental uh, rental vacancy rate in GTA is horrible. It's like 1.1%. Um, the average bachelor is uh, over $1,000. A two-bedroom is uh, $1,200. they are they are talking about uh, almost $1,300 for more than a two-bedroom. Mm -hmm. um, it's been the lowest uh, that it has been in 16 years. We have developers um, uh, and speculators uh, now buying condominiums. Um, and I want to give you at least a minute at the end to say your piece. Mm -hmm. um, is there an overview from a federal uh, position as far as rental housing, condominiums, and foreign ownership? Because that all kind of mixes into that soup. Mm -hmm. Well, those issues are not all necessarily, the, the issue is not really federal. Um, yeah, not have, all of it. 
We have created a housing strategy that's addressing yeah. affordable housing. Uh, we've put up in this last uh, year and a half 7,000 new affordable housing units. Uh, so we're trying to make sure that uh, that is there, that is a responsibility that lies uh, on our shoulders. I think Kathleen Wynne, uh, the mayor of Toronto, has taken measures to make sure so that... The Premier of Ontario. The pre sorry. Yeah. The Premier John, of Ontario, John thank Tory's you. The mayor of, uh, and, and the mayor, the mayor they're, they're of They're up for re-election, though, so that's, uh, yes. that's fair game. Yes, and... and, and <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll see what happens there. It's going to be an interesting year, but, yes. um, you know, the, those they've taken action on that mm -hmm. file. Um, the Minister of Finance, Minister I've talked to him about the issue of uh, affordability of mortgages of uh, you know apartment uh, yep. all of that stuff and, and and he's he is monitoring it closely uh, but what rental units go for um, unless they're subsidized by the yep. federal government is not necessarily uh, you talk about foreign ownership and I mean there was some stuff done um, in, in British Columbia they were trying to move to yeah. do it in Ontario so I guess we'll we'll see yeah. how that materializes I want to give you an opportunity as we're in the closing minutes of Live Town Hall. I'm going to give you an opportunity to talk to the folks directly at home. If there's something that you want to tell them, something you want to communicate to them, or um, you know, give you the airwaves to uh, say what you will. Yeah, I'm, I just want to thank you all for tuning in. Um, I think uh, in this last over two years, I've received uh, so much good feedback uh, from everybody, and even any feedback I consider good feedback because it helps me do my job better. Uh, so whether it is, you know, a, a negative comment in terms of, you know, they don't like what's happening or the direction, that is to me feedback and that's good. So I just want to say that please continue, continue to give me feedback. Uh, I really do appreciate it. I would like to see even more of you get engaged. Uh, you know, keep following us on social media so when we have town halls, uh, you come out and you voice your opinion. It, it actually is really important. I know that uh, everyone is, you know, has their priorities and their family and their jobs should be their first priorities. Uh, but in order for us to do a better job and to serve you properly, we, we need that constant connection with you. So this is a means of me connecting with you. And I hope that you will either reach out to me uh, tonight, uh, continue to do so. I don't know how much more time we have though, uh, but you can continue to do that on my social media, come to my office, come to the town halls. Uh, keep being that voice, it's important. I know that sometimes we feel that no matter what we do or say I hear this that's why I feel I, I know this to be true that people are thinking it but it's not true that what you say what you do does matter it does have an impact on how we act as uh, as your elected representatives so things do change uh, in this last election you know I, I definitely saw the, the numbers of young people coming out that had a big impact you know why do you think that uh, it's so important for the Prime Minister to have youth council for all of us to have youth councils because we know that youth are getting engaged and they are um, they are the future leaders and they care about these issues and a lot of the stuff a lot of these decisions we're making today are going to affect them tomorrow so um, make sure that your voice is heard get active on your campuses it doesn't matter what party um, you support get involved with that party if you wish to do so uh, in that type of a way or or just connect with your parliamentarians at every level if you have an issue we need to hear from you you can contact Ruby Sahoda at uh, ruby.sahoda at parl.gc.ca or constituency office at 905-840-0505. Ruby Sahoda, a member of parliament for Brampton North. Ruby, thank you so much for joining us today. It's wonderful. You. Thank you for um, working with us on this forum. It's always interesting. You got to take um, you got to take whatever they deliver up, and sometimes it's not fair. But that's not the point. The point is that you take it all. I, I think it's all fair. Um, it, feedback is good, and uh, even even tough questions prepares us for um, for dealing with those issues, right? And we need to learn to deal with those issues, and we also need uh, to figure out solutions to them. So we need to hear it. We need to hear all of it, good, bad, and ugly. Yep. Yeah. We'd like to thank Brampton Focus, uh, which is Paul Vicente, Don McLeod, and Fazil Khan. Uh, for their participation in making this possible. My name is Michael Lake Charbonne. You've been watching Live Town Hall. If you wish to go to Brampton Focus or Live Town Hall, you can see some of the other programs we've done. It's been a pleasure uh, being with you today. Uh, post your questions, and we'll talk with you again soon. Thanks for watching. Beautiful. Nice to meet you.